Pete. So we got uh, Jonathan in Mesa, Arizona. Hey, Matt. How are you and Martin doing? Just fine. Thanks. Ooh, Martin's just fine, and I'm pretty good. Yes. You're pretty good. Okay. You know, you know, very right? orange. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> But Martin, I noticed you switched from Oreos to Girl Scout cookies. Yes, I did. I, I, I do all, all of the, all of these uh, evil cookie brands that the uh, fundamentalists hate. Yeah, we, uh, should, we should have a chart of evil cookies that yeah. fundamentalists hate. Yeah, just, uh, just... <laughs> are, are secular cookies any better? Mm, well, those weren't uh, bad. Hi, you know. For you know, for peanut butter sandwich cookies, you can't really mess those up. I've been to a lot of church socials with homemade cookies. They're really, really good. So yeah. I'm not going to go out on a limb and say secular cookies are necessarily better. But I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that the cookies that they brought to church don't actually believe in God. So we could maybe claim them. Yeah. Impl implicit ago. atheist cookies? Yes, even if they are heavenly. <laughs> what do you got for us? Um, I had a question. Um, I've had this discussion with a couple different people, and I really haven't been able to get a grasp on it. As far as like the, or the origin of the universe... What can you tell me, uh, like, as the definition of this singularity? Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, we know what you're talking about. Um, you're talking to the wrong people to be giving scientific definitions. And when we're talking about universal origins, um, it's something that I don't know that we, in general, have a good enough understanding of, let alone uh -huh. Martin and I on the show. I mean, I have, there's a, there's a physicist sitting in the room right now who might, leaning forward, might you know, hem and haw about the precise definition of the singularity, I would think. Um, but basically, if my understanding is correct, in a nutshell, it's the point at which our mathematical understanding of the universe breaks down. Or it's actually a point just beyond where it breaks down, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I'm not getting a nod, so I could be wrong. OK. Maybe, maybe that's why I've never come to any kind of conclusion, because it seems like <laughs> there, there's so many different uh, views on it. Yeah, I mean, the, the math, the, the, the predictive math from the basics of Big Bang cosmology made predictions that have been confirmed by observations of cosmic microwave background radiation. And so what we've, what we've done, and I say we in the sense that I'm a part of the species that has yeah. done this, because <laughs> I couldn't, yeah. uh, is uh, devised a model that works as the best description of all the, the known facts about the universe. But there's a lot of things um, left to be resolved. So while I'm happy to say that as far as I'm aware, the Big Bang uh, model is the most accurate, most reliable model of the, of the early origins of the universe that we have, um, I'm not going to be uh, trying to define singularity or defending um, physics and, and cosmology that I don't personally Yeah, you want to talk to guys like Neil deGrasse Tyson about and stuff like that. Lawrence and, Krauss uh, yeah, and guys, Vic so. Stinger and... Yeah. Um, um, actually, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad... I'm sorry, did I, did I interrupt you? No, no, you're fine. Oh, okay. Um, uh, bringing up Lawrence Krauss, I saw an episode of this series called How the Universe Works, and it was with him, and, uh, I, I, I might say his name wrong, Michel Keku, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things that Krauss said was that the, when he mentioned the singularity is that it was an infinitesimally uh, uh, dense, infinitesimally hot piece of matter that exploded the universe into existence. And when I heard this, it kind of, the thing that seemed that it was contradicting uh, to me was uh, general relativity in the sense that uh, space, time, and energy all came into being at the exact same moment and simultaneously. And it seems to me if, if general relativity is true, and so far I haven't heard anyone say it's not, that this uh, speck of matter couldn't have existed before the universe came into being. So that kind of seems contradictive, doesn't it? Well, there's also the before the universe uh, being, that may not be a coherent um, because concept. Because of the time issue. Because of the time issue. But, uh, you know, if you actually... Google Lawrence Krauss's talk online call, called A Universe from Nothing. He gave it, I think, in 2009 uh, in California at, at an atheist convention. And he also did it again at the Imagine Religion Conference in Kamloops, British Columbia, with some revisions and updates. And he talks about um, the inherent unstableness of nothing. And I'm going to put yeah. that in quotes, even though Lawrence doesn't think I should. Um, right. because, and, and it's a book now, too. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's, 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 also, it's also a book, but there's a lot of discussions about it. But the big thing is, 
let's say that you don't understand it and I don't understand it. Uh -huh. Where does that get us? I mean, does, <laughs> does it change any? Does it does it change anything about whether or not there's a good reason to example believe that a god existed? Because even even if we even if we are wrong about our current understandings of the origin of the universe, um, as I as I pointed out earlier, poking holes in evolution doesn't get you to creationism. Poking holes in radiometric dating doesn't get you to a young Earth, and poking holes in modern cosmology doesn't get you to a god. Those things actually have to be. Uh, have evidence provided for on their own. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a false dichotomy, isn't it? Yeah, at worst case, it would just be we're back to we don't know. Right. This brings up a point about you know the way in which uh, you know the, the science rejecting Christians, and you know I'm not certainly they're not all under that umbrella. Um, you know, but the people who um, you know support creationism and reject evolution and Big Bang cosmology and old universe and all the rest of it is because they don't like this notion of not knowing things. And they, and they look at the fact that science hasn't got all the answers as uh, you know, being a problem for science. Uh, and, and whereas they can just uh, wave their holy book around and say, haha, but I do have all the answers. Uh, you know, when uh, Russell and Matt had their, uh, their uh, devoted an entire episode to talking to that glorious clown Ray Comfort, um, you know, his, his thing, one, one statement that he made was that, uh, you know, well, when it comes to, you know, the, why there's a universe or what have you, you guys don't have an answer, and I have an answer. And it's, that it's, seemed to him to be a, you know, the, a plus in his favor. And what he doesn't understand is, he, yeah, he had an answer, an answer, in the same way that I might have an answer if I were to just attribute anything that I didn't understand to the actions of the great pumpkin, right? It's actually, it's actually more than that. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, I'm going to have to let you go because there's one more call I want to get to Ooh, before okay. the show's over with. Um, but thanks so much for calling. Um, hey, thanks for taking me, guys. Sure. sure. Yeah. It's actually more than that. I, yeah. I just had a, a podcast debate on a Christian podcast the other day um, against John Ferrer, who I debated previously with uh, JT. We did a team debate. Okay. And one of the things that John kept saying over and over again was um, that there's something that it's uh, not okay to not know. I mean, it's, He's not comfortable with I don't know as an answer, and so when naturalistic explanations fail, he is somehow justified in kind of reaching out to supernatural explanations. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to explain that, no, when, when you get to the <laughs> point where you don't know, yeah. you just don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we're actually going to have time for this, but Spencer, are you there? Uh, hello? Sp Hi. Yeah, we've got like three minutes, I think. Uh, I apologize that we didn't uh, get... Player. All right. Whatever. That's, uh, that's outstanding. So the note here, yeah. just so you know, because I knew we weren't going to actually get the time to, to, time to do this by the time I saw it, it was uh, presuppositional apologetics. If God could reveal truth to us in a way we could understand, could we trust it? I want to get the host to admit there's a God. And so <laughs> while that has nothing to do with what the guy yeah. actually screamed in the um. phone, if God could reveal truth to us in a way we could understand it, could we trust it? Now, this kind of goes to the question that I've been asked over and over again is, what would it take for you to believe? Right. And I used to give answers like, you know, writing in the sky that was simultaneously understandable, <laughs> you know, comprehensible to people of different languages and stuff like that. Um, but I realized very quickly that, um, or maybe a little slowly, that this would be a very arrogant position to hold, that I am sufficiently knowledgeable that I can, that I have some way to detect um, what would actually qualify as a god from what is just amazingly super powerful alien technology type thing. Sure. And there's, you know, the, the uh, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Right. Um, it would be arrogant of me to presume that I could not be fooled by something godlike into thinking mm -hmm. that it was actually a god. Yeah. But the answer that I gave was, if there is a god, by definition, or by, you know, by the common definition of what a god is and capable of and any god worth the title, would definitely know what it would take to convince me and would be capable of doing so. Uh -huh. Now, we can kind of you know, pick nits about, yes, you're still using your, uh -huh. your brain and your senses and all these other things, but I'm saying that if there is a god, that god should be able to convince me. Um, uh -huh. And, well, and, and all an all-knowing being would know what it would take. Yeah, right? I mean, and so uh, you know, it, it's it's entirely then incumbent upon him to provide that information if he chooses. And if I was fooled, yeah, given those criteria, yeah, then whatever I was fooled by is sufficiently godlike to probably qualify as a god anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But no, here's the thing. Let's say, let's say amazingly advanced aliens land on Earth. Hi, we're aliens, and we're amazingly advanced. And mm. they have technology beyond our wildest dreams. They can even revive the dead. They can resurrect dead people. They can make us immortal. They can cure all disease. They can do anything. Would it be appropriate for us to worship them? Are they gods? Well, I wouldn't, the, I wouldn't worship anything, yeah, including but I mean, what's, what's the you difference? Know, actual god. You know, I was thinking about that. Like, what's the difference between a god and just some amazingly advanced being that can just do things that to you are magical? Yeah, like, it's, other it's than, one thing to recognize it. Other than how you choose to feel about them, yeah. right? So, yeah, this, I, this idea of worship is, is one that, um, you yeah. know, people ask me what it would take. Somebody asked me on the show, what would it take to make you a Christian again? Mm -hmm. And uh, I gave the answer that I pretty much just gave. Um, and, and I'm sure that was false now that I think about it, because that would be sufficient for me to believe that the Christian God is real. Mm -hmm. That's not enough to actually make me a Christian again. It would take considerably more than that to convince me that um, right. following that God or, or re revering that God um, is justified. Yeah. And this idea of worship is one that I kind of reject out of hand. The, any god worthy of worship doesn't need it or want it. Yeah. And the ones that do aren't. Um, and, mm -hmm. and so was, it, was it Hitchens who compared heaven to just like living in North Korea where all you do all yes. day is praise the dear leader? It's like, yeah. that's no fun. Yeah. So uh, we got like less than a minute left, mm. which is why I don't want to jump in on uh, yes. any, any calls. But I will say,